What I found so inspiring about Sachiko's approach to cooking was the way she took familiar veg like kale and carrots and turned them almost into brand new ingredients. And it's exactly that sort of transformation of regular old friends into something really special and different that I want to have a go at. And I'm going to do it with this bumper crop of runner beans. My plan is to transform these long green beans into something new and surprising. I was really quite tickled by Sashiko's quick pickle in a bag technique, and I definitely want to give that a whirl with the runner beans. Dry pickling like this relies on salt. Sachiko used a flavoured salt, but I'm going to try sea salt, sugar and spices. I thought some powdered ginger would be nice. Strong stuff, so just a couple of little shakes. Some coriander seeds. A quick bash with a pestle and mortar will help to release all that flavour. Maybe just a little pinch of chilli flakes. And for the body of this improvised pickle, a handful of thickly cut runner beans. That should do it. And you can see the salt is already drawing the moisture out of the beans and all the spices and the salt and the sugar is going to start pickling it straight away. And the next bean experiment I'm running with is a tempura. It'll certainly be the first time I've ever battered a runner bean. And in the minute or so that they're going to be in the hot oil, the batter should go crispy and the bean just cook lightly but still have plenty of crunch. Another really interesting thing that I gleaned from Sushiko is that the way you cut and prepare vegetables can make a huge difference to the finished dish. So I've cut these little slits down the middle of my runner beans because I want them to bow out a bit when they hit the batter and maybe overlap and interlock. There's no great mystery about a tempura batter. In fact, it's one of the easiest batters there is. It's simply 100 grams of plain flour mixed with 40 grams of corn flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Just whisking together the dry ingredients. But what you do need to make sure that it's really frothy and crispy at the end is some of this sparkling water. You'll need about 200 millilitres and it should be ice cold. Look at that fizzing and frothing, that's what it's all about. Want to move pretty fast now. Get it while there's still some froth there. It goes straight into hot sunflower oil for just 90 seconds. That is looking really good. All wispy and wafery and crispy and delicious. Now for that dipping sauce. You can make a quick and easy version of a sweet chilli sauce by melting some red currant or crab apple jelly in a small pan, adding a dash of soy sauce, two tablespoons of cider vinegar, a couple of cloves of finely chopped garlic and half a chopped red chilli. Add a grind of black pepper and allow it all to simmer for five minutes. Tempura is such a great way to prepare a whole host of different vegetables. And the dipping sauce works with all kinds of veg fritters too. A couple of tidy piles of pickle completes, if I may say so, a rather elegant plate. The batter has such a lovely light crunch to it. But really, it's still all about the runner beans. They've got such a good flavour and such a lovely crunch themselves. And even with that hot, sweet and sour dipping sauce, that lovely runner bean flavour comes through. So how about this quick bean pickle? If I was going to be hypercritical, it is a little bit too salty. But it's still really good and I can easily remedy that the next time I make it, which I definitely will. Two tasty treats to inspire deep reverence for the good old runner bean. Mm.